Good morning and welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Darren and it's a joy to welcome you to this Facebook Live broadcast. One of the great things about this format is that we're able to interact with one another through the comments section. So I invite you to say good morning, share a prayer request, or to offer some celebration about something wonderful that's happened in your life. We believe that worship is the work of the people. And so today you'll hear from several of our members in different ways, whether it's bringing a welcome or reading scripture. And we believe that we are all being given a gift for the common good. So with those words in mind, let us worship God. Welcome to church. Good morning, St. Paul family. Welcome to worship. We're so thankful for the St. Paul staff who have made it possible for us to worship online each of these last few weeks. We hope that in this time you've been able to spend some good time with your family and see some positive for this. We can't wait to be with you guys again soon. Lord, as we worship you this day, open our hearts to your leading. May we hear and heed your call, the call to live according to the example Christ has set forth for us. As the twelve disciples left what was familiar and followed Jesus. May we boldly step out in faith and follow where you lead. Not counting the cost, but relying fully on your strength and power. Use us for your glory today and always. Amen. Amen. Good morning, friends. 
Today for the children's moment, I wanted to tell you a story that Jesus used to tell. It can be found in the book of Matthew in chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. Here, Jesus says, what do you think? If a shepherd has 100 sheep and one of them goes missing, doesn't the shepherd leave the rest of the sheep to go look for the one that went missing? And if he finds it, he rejoices more for finding that one than over the 99 that never left. It's kind of like having toys. I'm sure you all have so many toys that you love to play with just like this. But when you realize one is missing, you get so worried. Where's my mommy? You start looking for them everywhere. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Is she? And when you find them, you're so excited. Here's mommy! With this story, Jesus is trying to tell us that even though we have a ton of sheep to care for, we should see that when one may need our help, we must do everything possible to help them. This does not mean that we care any less for the 99. This just means that we realize the need of the one. Right now in our world, there are a lot of sad and scary things happening, and a lot of our friends feel like they don't matter because of the color of their skin. Jesus' story helps us to realize that our friends need help. He wants us to help them know that they matter and they are loved because we were all created in the image of God. Now let's pray. Dear God, please help us to remember that our friends need help and please give us guidance on how best to help them. We love you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have given us. Amen. Please join me in this morning's prayer for illumination. Dear God, please open our hearts, open our minds to hear your word so that we can be healed by your presence that comes through it. We give thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, to chapter 10, verse 8. This is the New International Version. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his 12 disciples. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 disciples. First, Simon, who's called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas 
and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 that Jesus sent out had the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of Samaria. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim the message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been lost? I have. A few years ago, my wife and I were traveling in uh, Europe and our destination was to see the Passion Play in Oberammergau. This uh, play has been held every 10 years since uh, the 1600s. It's a beautiful place. We were touring the cathedrals and historical sites in Germany on our way there when I began to realize I was no longer with my group. Now, I often lag behind to uh, take photos, but usually stay in view of the tour guide. I looked in every direction and did not recognize anyone. Maybe I should stay in one spot and they'll come back the same way as that was my thinking. I waited and waited as strange faces passed by speaking a language I did not understand. And if I had had some command of the language, what could I have said except I'm lost? Well, at first I didn't mind it because I thought it was temporary. But after a while, I started looking around thinking, uh, well, I'll just start looking for places where tourists go. You know, maybe they would stop for ice cream. Maybe they'd stop for lunch. Maybe someone had to go to the restroom. But I looked and looked and uh, didn't find anybody that I recognized. After a while, though, I saw someone from our group looking frantically, and he said, Bob, Bob, we've been looking for you. Your wife, your wife is worried. Well, I finally was reunited with the group. I gave my wife a hug, and after the hug, I realized she's not worried, she's angry. She's angry. Well, after a couple of days, you know, we, uh, uh, we, we finally made up and restored communication. <laughs> so have you ever been lost? Are you lost now? Jesus tells his disciples that he came to find the lost sheep of Israel. He sent them out to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out the demons. And he said, don't go to the Gentiles or anywhere near the Sumerian villages. Instead, go to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, if the Jews are the chosen people, and by extension, so are we, then that lost sheep of Israel remark, that, that kind of stings. We're part of the church. We're members. We're saved, aren't we? Is everyone who claims conversion converted? Are we, after all, lost sheep? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait just a minute. I knew when I was in Europe, I knew I was lost. Is Jesus saying that the Jews he came for are lost? Members of the flock are lost. Us? Do we have members who are pretending or, or hoping, but not yet having had a personal experience with God? Uh, are there those among us who have not had a conversion experience? Are we just sort of hiding in plain sight? Are we pretending 
to be part of the flock, but we're not really part of the flock. It's kind of confusing. We don't dare judge, though, who's really a Christian and who's not. Because, you know, we want to be uh, politically correct. Many of us are what I call undercover Christians. We're secret disciples. And uh, so we don't say a whole lot. We want to remain sort of in the shadows so that no one will accuse us or expect too much of us. And when I was about nine or 10 years old, my Sunday school teacher was my uncle who had a great influence on me. And uh, I remember a Sunday school lesson that, uh, that I think of often, even, even now. He said, you know, suppose that you were indicted, taken to court, accused of being a Christian. Would there be enough evidence to convict you? Wow. That's something to think about. Now back to lostness for a, for a minute. What did, what did Jesus mean by the lost sheep of Israel? When he sent out his disciples to preach the gospel of the kingdom, heal the sick, raise the dead, all the things that we've mentioned before, cast out demons. Why did Jesus put this restriction on their mission? Now, if you go back to John's gospel, where you'll find the uh, Good Shepherd discourse, he says something that I've just recently discovered. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Now his mission to the Jews would extend beyond the Jews eventually in line with God's covenant with Abraham, you know, the promise, the promise that we hold on to. And later in Matthew chapter 28, uh, we, we hear that great commission, go into all the world go into Judea and Samaria and everywhere, even go to the ends of the earth and tell people the good news. But first things first. Interestingly, the name Jesus means he will save his people from their sins. In other words, Jesus is the Christ. And for this reason, during his earthly ministry, Jesus was focused on the Jews, the heirs of the promise, and everywhere they went. When they went from town to town, they always went to the synagogue or the temple, and they preached the good news. The good news was that, look, the Messiah has come. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Son of God. So, why did Jesus say, just restrict your, your ministry to the Jews? I like what uh, Eric Hollis says. Eric Hollis is a Benedictine priest. And in a sermon a few years ago, he attempts to address that question about the lost sheep of Israel. And let me just paraphrase a few things that he said. He reminds the congregation that Jesus said uh, to his disciples, go to the lost sheep of Israel. Now this is kind of timid because, you know, John the Baptist was on fire. Jesus, John the Baptist, you know, had a, had a ministry that Jesus was supposed to take and extend. But when we look at the timeline, Jesus didn't go beyond John the Baptist's ministry. Instead, he sort of circled back and focused on the Jews. Now, why is that? Well, according to Father Hollis, before we 
go out and preach the gospel to others, before we evangelize to others, let's make sure that we are evangelized. Let's make sure that we are believers. Let's make sure that we're ready uh, to be ministers in the world and be disciples. That's why we pray daily. That's the reason why we uh, take the body and the blood, remembering what Christ did for us. So when we talk about going out to the greater world, Father Hollis is really saying, let's, uh, let's remember that as often as not, you and I are among the lost sheep. So let's get our own house in order before we go out to uh, tell others. So here's the good news. The shepherd is still looking for lost sheep. And the old hymn says it perfectly. There were 90 and nine, and one was lost. One asked, Lord, there are 90 and nine, is that not enough for thee? One of my sheep has wandered away. I'll go to the desert to find my sheep. I'll go anywhere, no matter how long it takes. I'll be, I'll keep looking for my lost sheep. I'll go to the desert and find my sheep. I'll go to the desert and find my sheep. Oh, what a savior. May it be so. Amen. There were ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the flock. But one was out on the hills away, far off in the cold and dark. Away on the mountains, wild and bare, Away from the tender shepherd's care, Away from the tender shepherd's care. Lord, thou hast here thy ninety and nine, Are they not enough for thee? But the shepherd made answer, this of mine has wandered away from me. And although the road be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. I go to the desert to find my sheep. And although the mountains thunder riven and up from the rocky steep, there arose a cry to the gate of heaven, Rejoice, I have found my sheep. And the angels echoed around the throne, Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own. Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own. Affirmation of faith comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 35, 37, and 38. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. 
we are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Someone has suggested that prayer unites our soul with God and with one another. Therefore, let us join our hearts together and let us pray. Gracious and loving God, each and every day we are amazed by your creation. We are grateful for all your many gifts. We are especially thankful for the gift of the St. Paul community who gathers this morning. As we pray, we cast our cares upon you because we believe that you care for us. And our hearts ache for the suffering that we see and the suffering that we know. Today we, we cling to the promise of your scriptures from Romans, which says, Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Lord, thank you for that promise in your scriptures. And we pray that our eyes will be open to the Holy Spirit among us. Give us big hearts for one another and for our neighbors. Make us eager to forgive and ready to receive the blessing of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for the needs in our lives and we pray for the joys. We pray for the day when lion will lay down with lamb and peace will come. Lord, until that day, help us to listen carefully to our neighbors and comfort those who have experienced crushing loss. As we pray, we remember the concerns of our families and friends and those in our church family. And we pray that you will abide with us today, and you'll help us to trust our future with you. We make this prayer now in the name of the one who's always faithful, Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scriptures remind us that every good and every perfect gift comes from God. As Christians, part of our offering is ourselves. We offer ourselves to God to be shaped, directed, and empowered to do the ministry of God in the world. We are grateful for your continued generosity as we have been experiencing some time away from our physical campus. But your gifts have allowed ministry continue through the ministry of worship and connection and care. And so, as we receive our offerings this day, may the Lord bless what is given and use it to build, God, build God's kingdom this day and always. Pray with me. Gracious God, we are so thankful for your many gifts, for the ways they bless us so that we can in turn bless others. May you receive these gifts and use them Use them to make all things new in your world. In Christ's name and for our sake we pray. Amen.
Go in peace. Go and serve the Lord. And remember that God is still looking for lost sheep. Amen.